The next talk is by Karol Horodesky. He's going to talk about cost of quantum secret key. So, Karol, please go ahead. The stage is yours. Thank you for the introduction. It's a great pleasure to con contribute to the TQC uh, conference. I will tell you about the results obtained in collaboration with Siddhartha Das, uh, my doctoral student, Leonard Sikorsky, and Mark Wilde. And the results will be in an archive. So, this is the outline. I tell a little bit about motivation, then um, treat the secure key as a resource, and uh, introduce some important notions like tools, namely private states, strictly reducible private states, and generalized ones. And then I pass to some results, um, namely the first is defining the key of formation, then proving some mathematical properties of it and further defining the key cost and characterizing it in terms of the key of formation. And then uh, I will talk about uh, the cases when there is reversibility and also irreversibility in the yield cost relation related to private key. And finalize by um, talking about key cost of quantum behaviors and quantum channels. I'll conclude with some summary. So regarding motivation, we know a bunch of research theories, um, like the prominent ones are entanglement, non-locality, steering, and, and many, many others. And, and the question is, what about quantum secret key? Can we also develop this fully as a research theory? And one could ask, oh, maybe this is the late entanglement theory because um, of the short class key proof of security of BBT4. Uh, it's reduced to entanglement distillation, but the answer is no. It will be different theory because pure entanglement is, is in general different than, than secure key. There are states that have positive key, but zero distillable entanglement. Okay, so uh, now I want to um, compare the theories of entanglement and current knowledge about resource theory of quantum secret key. So let's focus on the um, first, uh, of the first and second column. We have theory of entanglement. I think all of you know it. The objects are bipartite states. The operations that we can perform are local operation and classical communication, LOCC. And the states that are free, uh, available, are separable states. There is a whole zoo of entanglement measures. I just mentioned here three, one, three of them. This is distillable entanglement, ED, entanglement cost, EC, and entanglement of formation. And the state with ideal resources, uh, for example, singlet state or any other equivalent maximal entangled states, state. And now regarding quantum secret key, in, in a common approach, you transfer, transform tripartite states by local operations and public communication. Mm, we don't know what, are, what is exactly the set of free states. Um, we know that there, there, there is something like distillable key, which is a measure of, of security, or of uh, the rate of secure key. And the state with ideal resource is represented by one bit of key for one time path, which is correlated random two correlated random beats decoupled from if and on the other hand uh, on the last column i show that if you go to the worst case namely you allow in this tripartite state if dropper to hold the whole purification of a state that is shared by Alison and, and bob then you can focus just on this bipartite state that is shared because if is already defined by this state and then you can just transform its equivalent to transform it by locc operations then there is a measure which is known, which is distillable key. And the question marks still are there. While the state with ideal resource, um, they generalize the, the notion of singlet. And these are called private states and they are kind of uh, twisted singlet. So you take a singlet state here and you tensor it with state row and rotate it by special unitary transformation. I will show details in, in a minute. So back to this issue that we don't know what are the free objects in resource theory of private key. So what we what we surely know is that separable states are fully insecure. So if something is separable, then distillable key is zero. This is resolved by Kurt Levenstrauss and Lithenhaus. And, uh, and there is a warning, um, and namely the question if there are entangled states which have zero distillable key is a long-standing open problem. You can find it on ICOC if you list. Um, so we will not answer this question here. Uh, conversely, we assume that the, for the moment, which is according to the state of the art, that no entangled state that have zero key exists, so that only three objects are separable states. 
And, and assuming that, we will we want to ask what is the key cost of quantum state, how to define key of formation, and how they are related. Okay, so now a little bit comment about ideal states in resource theory of private key because it's important. So private states take this form that you take this um, again singlet state, something on which is on the so-called key part, then the arbitrary state on the shield part, which protects the key part, and then you rotate it by a control unitary transformation that has a control on the key and performs unitary transformations on the shield, which is called twisting. And um, yeah, and like I said, that the, there is this, this equivalence that you can either transform this tripartite state, the, the purified total pure state by LOPC, and or equivalently you can transform bipartite marginal of it, or that of Alice and Bob, this, this into, I mean, by means of LOCC operations. So the target state in distilling key are then private states. And here is the definition of, um, of this global key. It's a bit of monster. So I just say a little bit from inside. So you take P, which is a low PC operation. You take N copies of your state row and you want to transform by this low PC operation, the input state some, to something close to a private state. And what matters is the, the ratio between the key bits M divided by the n invested copies. So in, in asymptotic limit, this m over n is, is uh, this double key when we allow error to small error that goes to zero. I will also use a different notation instead of gamma m for the m key bits, I use the notation gamma dk uh, ds, which is dk is a local dimension of the key part and ds is local dimension of the shield because it's sometimes convenient. Um, so the anatomy of a private state is visualization is that there's this key part, which when you measure, you get key. There's a sheet which you have to uh, store forever in some place separated from if, because if holds purification. So once you get shield, there is no key. What's important here is the class of irreducible private states. These are those that have uh, that uh, a private state gamma M is irreducible it if it has exactly M key bits. So there is no more key in that. So a whole key in, this, in the shield. And strictly irreducible are those irreducible, which become separable means insecure when if measures their key part. Namely, if she attacks it or the key leaks, then there is no more key in the state. And uh, these are important notions. They are related, namely, if there are no bound key states, like we assume here, and then every irreducible private state is actually strictly irreducible. So after attacking, it becomes separable. Okay, so now, so this is the scenario that we um, consider, namely Alice and Bob, and if they start from some purification of a strictly irreducible private state, and uh, Alice and Bob uh, try to transform it into, by LOCC, into n copies, approximate n copies of raw AB state. And the task is to minimize m over n, uh, roughly speaking. So now let's go to come to the definition. Um, we define the asymptotic key cost Kc of rho and the one-shot key cost uh, in the following way. Um, so the the key cost is just a limit of the one-shot key cost uh, divided by n and taken on n copies of rho, while the one-shot key cost is um, uh, min is the minimal number of key bits log decay uh, represented by the uh, bipartite uh, uh, private state, strictly reducible private state gamma decay ds, such that there exists a LOCC operation that transforms it into raw up to epsilon, so in, in trace norm distance. And uh, regarding the uh, uh, history of the, the prehistory of this notion, is that uh, analogous formulas, but in a different uh, cryptographic scenario has been considered, namely in secure key agreement scenario where the three parties share a um, just random variable, X for Alice, Y for Bob and Z for Eve. I mentioned a little bit about that later. Um, and also I, I, I just recently learned that a more general definition where instead of strictly reducible states, uh, the irreducible private states are, were considered by Stefan Baum in his master thesis under supervision of Matthias Kristandl. Um, sorry, I don't know how to hide this bar. Okay. Um, um, 
which which were made public or unpublished. Uh, and uh, uh, at this moment, we can say that um, uh, up to dimension three by three, the key cost is equal to entanglement cost because there is no place in such small dimensions for the shielding system. So these two quantities coincide, uh, given I can tell you already this, which follows from the results that we show. But um, in general, the key cost and entanglement costs are differ different because there exists private state that has very large entanglement cost, log dimension of the shield, local dimension of the shielding system over two, but they are private, so they are they have key cost one by definition. Okay, so this is our scenario. This is the domain uh, definition of the key cost. And now I want to give credit to the past. Like I said, in secure key agreement, there was this uh, uh, um, also the notion of the key cost of of the of the distribution. However, this was this was I, like I said, key, key cost of a different object of a distribution. And uh, when it was mapped to quantum state, it was usually mapped by Collins uh, Popescu mapping, that you take square roots of probabilities and, and make a pure state out of it. While here we will consider general pure state and general quantum state. So it's, we 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 follow general uh, approach. And and to my to to my knowledge in these papers, the key cost of a general state has not been defined. Okay. So last last notion in the toolkit. We need to generalize private states because private state correspond to singlet, and now we want to have analogs of pure states rather than singlet states. So we know that every pure bipartite state can be written in Schmidt basis form, so that you have uh, Schmidt uh, lambda e, lambda i Schmidt uh, coefficients and e i f i Schmidt basis, and uh, now we can twist this pure state in so that the control of twisting looks into this uh, um, Schmidt basis. So you take this psi, feed it instead of singlet in the key part, you take whatever in the shield and you to rotate it by unitary, which is a control. It controls EI and FI basis and acts unitarily on with WI on, on the shielding system. So these are mixed state analogs of pure states. And um, I, we call them, and, uh, and they are strictly reducible generalized private states when a rotated state on the shield given each i are separable. Again, like you can think that if when if comes and measures it, then it becomes a totally separable state, like insecure. Okay, so now uh, coming to results, we define a new notion, namely the key of formation that will be crucial in the, the characterization of uh, key cost. So consider a state row and uh, let, let, us, let us split it into ensemble, a mixture, of uh, strictly reducible uh, generalized private states. Uh, so the key of formation is infimum of the average amount of key over all such splittings, right? So the infimum is taken once again over ensembles of strictly reducible generalized private states that I told you just a while before, which are corresponding of a pure state. And instead of so we, we take we take a local uh, amount of key, which is entropy of the eight key system of this uh, private state. And then the number of elements in this ensemble, this i can be is finite, but can be arbitrary. Um, uh, and it can be taken no more than DAB squared plus one due to Karateo Doris argument. However, we don't know if the infimum is attained in on some particular optimal ensemble. And uh, like a similar, like I said before, KF and EF, meaning entanglement of formation and key of formation, up to two Q treats are in are equal, but are not equal in general. And this is full analogy to uh, entanglement of formation, which I think all of us know, uh, which is the average amount of uh, local entropy of the pure state uh, when we split the row into ensembles of pure states. Okay, having that definition. Uh, we can prove that key of formation is actually entanglement measure. So uh, entanglement measure is a positive real valued function that does not increase under loss C3. Um, uh, so formally, when you have state and you measure it and you get outcomes sigma i with probability qi, then we show that kf is overall is upper, is upper bound to the average of kf of sigma i's. And we do it by showing that kf is invariant under local unitary transformation and that KF satisfies this flux condition that when you have a state with local flux K, then the uh, then it's equal to the average of the KF, uh, we, where we use the techniques of uh, Michal Horodetsky. 
Now, the second property that we prove, which is common, in, uh, is to show that entanglement measure is asymptotically continuous, namely that it does not differ too much on close by states. So if you have, so it's kind of um, experimental friendly measure, and uh, namely if, if your rho is close to your prime in trace norm distance, then the kf of rho is close to kf of rho prime up to some negligible factors. And uh, yeah, and the idea of the proof is uh, we based on this paper by Andreas Winter and also Aliski and Fanes. We express the key of formation in terms of conditional entropy, and then we use the fact that conditional entropy is asymptotically uh, asymptotically continuous. Sorry, I want to hide the bar, and again, I forgot how to do it. Okay. Um, so now the main result. Um, uh, this is characterization of the key cost. So for any bipartite state rho, there is Kc of rho equals um, re regularized key of formation of rho. Where regularization is that you take Kf of n copies of rho, divide by n and take a limit. So the, to show this equality, we, we, we show two, equal, two inequalities. And the first one is quite easy. It follows directly from monotonicity and asymptotic continuity of the key of formation that I told you before um, about, um, which is standard in, in kind of entanglement measures. Uh, but the converse inequality needed something new, uh, namely to show it, we need to um, design the dilution protocol, namely the protocol that dilutes privacy in the sense that it transforms a private state that has ideal privacy uh, into n copies of generalized private states. So this is, I just want to stress, this is analogy here to the result that regularized entanglement of formation is equal to entanglement cost by Haydn, Terhal, and uh, Michal Horodetsky. So what is this private dilution protocol? Uh, just visualization, you have a, a special, on the left-hand side, you have a private state that is twisted singlet. And by LOCC, you want to transform it into approximate of n copies of um, a twisted pure state. Now pure state has this coefficients a0 zero, zero, and a, a and b. And um, uh, so, so again, this form of gamma private state is a twisted, uh, um, singlet by some unitary. And here we have n copies of twisted uh, psi state, again with some uh, twisting on it and maybe different shielding system. So this is our task. And how, and first, what is the performance of what we have de designed? So we have designed the dilution protocol, which has the following, does the following. You take a private state gamma dn, I mean, the key part of it has local dimension dn. And, and also a singlet state, which is also a private state um, with local dimension D prime. We need a little bit of this entanglement, pure entanglement here. And by LOCC, you transform it into approximate n copies of, of generalized private state. So the, of the left-hand side, we have to specially design private state. And here we have a target state that we have to produce, the generalized private state. And performance is that log dn, log dimension of this key part of the private state is approximately n times entro local entropy of psi, which is which is here hidden. And log dn prime is, is negligible. It is four times delta n where delta goes to zero with n. So they fight with each other, but if you divide by n, it's negligible, which is relevant because we care the rates. We can divide by n. So the meaning is that we need essentially uh, n times local entropy of psi of a private key to generate, to create the state gamma psi by LOCC. And like I said, the protocol uses non-zero but negligible amount of key in form of this pure entanglement. And uh, so what's the idea of this protocol? The task is to create the state and the input, we, we design some gamma in state with a shield which is already similar to the shield the shielding system that we want to achieve, we want to create of gamma psi tensor n. And there are two parts of the protocol. The first one is kind of um, coherence dilution in a sense. So Alice creates locally n pure states which, which are isomorphic to this uh, psi. It should be a and b instead of lambda zero, lambda one, sorry about that. But okay, this is this this twisted uh, pure state, uh, the pure state that is twisted. <clears throat> so she she creates a isomorphic copy like in, in form of coherence, which is lambda zero plus lambda one, one. Then she compresses it because it's a pure state can be compressed. Um, then she performs a synod from this psi local compressed part to the key part of gamma in, measures the key part, 
sends the classical outcome to Bob X, and Bob corrects his key part of the gamma in uh, based on X. Okay, so like I said, this is, uh, I will not uh, tell more about that. It's just uh, something like coherent dilution using, coherence dilution using the key part of a private state. And what is the result of it? Namely, the amplitudes, if you consider uh, binary sequences, S1, S2, S to be S, and the uh, beta X is a function of S uh, and the outcome key that Alice tells to Bob, then uh, the state is, oh, there's this bar. Sorry, I don't know how to, how to take this bar out. Anyway, sorry. Uh, what did I do? Can you see my screen? I hope and you can see my screen. Yes. And yeah, you're okay. already one minute over the. We already. Have, well, I have just one minute. <laughs> no, you are already one minute over the time. I'm already over time. Yes. Sorry, I was. I was pretty sure that I have twenty-five minutes for the talk. Okay, I'll speed up. I, uh, um, sorry, I'll take some time for questions. So let's keep the proof. If there will be question, I can show you. The second part is just that uh, they they uh, swap out the systems that are incorrect and teleport them. And let's come to the the next results. Um, uh, the, we still the, don't see your uh, sorry. Your you slides? don't see my screen. No. Sorry. I click something incorrectly and I stopped sharing. Okay. Okay, yes. Okay, so I just full screen. I want to have a full screen here. Okay, now we cannot do the full screen because of the bar. Okay, so. Uh, First, I want to say that uh, the, there is a re reversible case, namely for strictly reducible private states, all the measures like Kc, Kd, relative entropy, and Kf are equal to the local entropy of Psi, which is in analogy to pure entanglement. And, um, and But for squash entanglement, there is the analogy breaks because uh, squash entanglement is not, not, not always less than key cost. That's one result. There's irreversibility in general, so we proved that KD is equal than is less than or equal than KC, uh, the key cost. We show that relative entropy were regularized the lower bound lower bounds the key cost. And then we prove uh, that there are states for which there is a gap between KD and KC. Yeah? So there is this irreversibility like in entanglement theory. Okay, and now just two slides, last two slides. The key cost of the device, you can, de you can define the key cost of an uh, input output device in device independent QKD, um, which is the key cost of an underlying state when you take infimum over realization of your device by states and measurements. And we have a couple of results that if a state is realized by a PPT state, then it has nice upper bound by key cost and minimum of the key cost and its key cost mm, uh, with a partial transposed. And also, we know states that have uh, vanishing key cost. Uh, so the, the still device dependent key is one, but the device independent key cost goes to zero, which is kind of interesting. And the last uh, thing is that we can also divide the key cost of channels. I'm not well much about definition because we are beyond the time. I apologize for that. I was pretty sure that I have like 25 minutes for the talk. Um, so for telesimulated channels, the chance that you can realize by teleportation on some resource state, we show that when you regularize the key of formation of the channel, then you again get the key cost uh, that, that's equal to the key cost of the resource state. Okay, and here you have the definition of the key of formation. Uh, so, so this is the summary. We have developed resource theory of private key, introduced novel measures of entanglement and non-locality, we have given characterization, and there are open problems. So how to compute KF and KC for other states than private states? That's a big question. Is there a more proper way to define them for devices? You can do it maybe a different way. And, uh, and maybe it's interesting to compare like different devices, protocols, um, and, and scenarios regarding how much they cost in terms of secret key. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention.
Okay, thank you so much, Carol, for the very nice talk. Uh, we have maybe one, two minutes for a very short question. Do we have questions? Uh, okay, maybe I can ask a very short question, Carol. Sure. I was wondering yeah. if this Kia formation is non-additive or... Um, it's a good question. I think in general it is not. Like it, it uh, like in, in low dimensional examples, uh, it uh, like below three by three, it coincides with entanglement of formation. So it inherits all the properties like non-additivity. Uh, and uh, and for higher dimensions, I'm pretty sure this is also the case. Uh, although I don't know the higher higher dimensional example of non-additivity at the moment. But Are they sure. simple examples that the the quantity is additive or? Uh, uh, like um, on on these generalized private states, yeah. So you, you, it is equal to this double key, and it's just n times. I mean, um, because because it it, it equals uh, this. Uh, key cos equals this global key and equals key of formation they all coincide and and they're they are in this case additive but uh, uh but this is like a special case i think it's like it's like on pure states uh, entanglement formation is additive mm -hmm. yes, because it's local entropy so it's like this analogy goes here as well but this is a very special case in general i'm pretty sure they are not it's not the case okay. and it will be hard to compute it also <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's, yeah. if we don't have any more questions, let's thank the speaker again.